for the introduction. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, so thank you for the organizer. I'm very uh, glad to come back to uh, uh, CISA. Uh, okay, so I uh, will talk about uh, joint work with uh, Gabor Lugosi. Yes, I think it's working. But... So I will talk about a joint work of, with uh, Gabor Lugosi and uh, Nikita Zibotovsky. Okay, so it will be about uh, noise sensitivity for, uh, in random matrix theory. So I should maybe start with uh, uh, some a very uh, uh, general uh, background on noise sensitivity. So this, I think it has started with uh, seminal work by Kan uh, Kalai and uh, Lineal in 88. And it has been developed in the 90s, notably by Talagran and by Bourguin, Kan Kalai and Lineal. And uh, okay, so what is it about? It's, uh, it, the original setup is on the hypercube, so you take uh, a product space like the hypercube, 0, 1 to the n, okay, and you take a function here which goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so in fact it should be a sequence of functions, but I will not write the index because it will be a property which will be holding when n goes to infinity. So, so f depends on n, but uh, I will remove this parameter. Okay, and I put here the uniform measure, so I take x a uniform point uh, on uh, the hypercube. And so my function gives me an, out an output f of x, okay? Now, uh, I run the following dynamics. So it's a Markov chain. Uh, at each step of the Markov chain, I take one of the entry and I resample it, accord I resample it. Okay, so I flip a coin and it will be zero or one independently of the rest of the configuration. Okay, so I obtain a xk, which will be uh, uh, something, okay, I will not write it, so it will be also uniform on, zero of, of, on, uh, on the hypercube, but where, so it's k uh, coordinates have been resampled. Okay. And so now the, the function will be said to be noise sensitive. If you look at the expectation of the output of your function when you observe, when you have resampled k variables, okay, given that you know the vector x, okay? And now you look at the variance of that as a x valued uh, as a random variable, okay? And you will say that your function f, so it's again a sequence of function, is noise sensitive sensitive if this variance goes to zero as n goes to infinity for some for some k, which depends on n, uh, which, are, which is little o, which is uh, little o of n, okay? Which means that you will completely, the output of your function will not depend, uh, will asymptotically not depend on uh, the initial vector when you have resampled only uh, a, a microscope, uh, 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 a very small number of uh, coordinates. Okay, so, so that was the beginning of the story. And uh, so there is a huge theory about uh, noise, sensitive, noise sensitive function. And uh, there is a monograph by uh, uh, Chatterjee in 2014, uh, which uh, uh, uses that, uh, he calls it under a different name. And uh, and you may, for example, you may ask the similar question for uh, the, instead of looking at the, I take Rn here, 
I take the Gaussian measure in ten, in, instead of looking at the uniform measure on the unit cube. And uh, instead of looking at this, this, uh, this resampling of coordinates uh, dynamics, I, I run a norstein renbeck process. Okay, so the same idea at every time I, I am at equilibrium, but I look at how fast the correlation of my function decays with n. Okay, so and uh, it's a remark at the beginning of the book of uh, Schwab Chatterjee. It's like not noise sensitive uh, functions for the orstein ullenbeck uh, process. Process uh, uh, is equivalent. It's closely related, or it's, it's in fact it's equivalent to function, which improve to functions, which improve on uh, the Poincaré inequality for the Gaussian measure. So more precisely, uh, what do I mean by that? So you have the Poincaré equality that uh, if you take a function, so now I, it's a Gaussian, so my vector x is a complex, uh, is a standard Gaussian in Rn, and you take the, the variance of f of x, so which will be bounded by the uh, expectation, maybe there is a constant, but uh, I didn't check, maybe it's too... Uh, Okay, so it's bounded by the expectation of the L2 norm of the gradient. Okay, so this is a Poincaré inequality. And uh, functions will be, will, the function will be noise sensitive, or again, the sequence of function will be noise sensitive for the orstein runbeck process, if and only if uh, noise sensitive, if and only if uh, so here, here you have an improvement of a Poincaré inequality with some epsilon, uh, with epsilon which depends on n and which goes to zero. Okay, so when you have a function which improves on Poincaré inequality with some factor uh, which going to vanishing factor, uh, then your function will be noise sensitive for the orstein runbeck process. And it's, again, it's more general than that if you have a general uh, uh, Markov, uh, Markov process with uh, uh, consider the invariant measure. Okay, so there is a, it's more general than that. But so uh, the, the, what I even, why I mentioned that is that if you want to look uh, in discrete settings of uh, kind of candidate state, candidate functions for for which you should have uh, noise sensitivity, it should be functions such that uh, the variance is much less uh, than the expectation of the gradient. Okay, so now. Let's uh, start uh, the talk. I mean, what I have to say. Uh, so it will be about a top eigenvector of uh, Wigner matrices. Okay, so. Uh, so you take X, uh, you take a Victor matrix. Uh, so it will be a real Victor matrix, but uh, you can make complex if you want to. So I, so the so XIJ for R I larger than J, okay, they are independent. Uh, they are centered. And uh, they have a, Variance one, and we assume a tail exponent, uh, like a sub-exponential tail. But this is bounded uh, for some delta positive. Okay, so there is a tail. It's uh, an exponentially decreasing tail uh, with for some. Okay, so this is my Wigner ensemble. So I look at uh, the largest eigenvalue. Largest eigenvalue. I take a unique V, a unit eigenvector. Okay, so this is my top eigenvector. Okay, so I will be interested by uh, uh, noise sensitivity for this, uh, 
for these uh, random uh, functions, okay? And notably for the unit eigenvector, for the v-stop eigenvector. So what will be my model? It will be exactly the model of uh, the model of uh, Can, Calai, and Lineal. So I take SK, uh, which is a subset, a, a uniformly random subset. of the set of ij with uh, i larger than j okay. uh, of, size k, of size k. Okay. So I assume that sk plus 1 is obtained by sk by just picking a new, a new point uh, uniformly at random among the points which has not been chosen so far. Okay, I take x prime, which is... Uh, I ah, should have said that it's symmetric, so xij is equal to xji, okay, so it's Victor matrix. X prime, which is an independent copy of, of x. Okay, and exactly like here, I define xk to be uh, x prime ij if ij is in sk. Okay, so this is for uh, i larger than j and for otherwise I use symmetry. And xij if uh, not otherwise. Okay, so at every, so is, you get a Markov chain and I have a matrix xk. Uh, so this gives me a matrix xk where I've taken k entries at random of the array of matrix, of, uh, k entries at random, and I have resampled them. Okay, so I have lambda k, largest eigenvalue, and uh, vk, uh, largest eigen, the top eigenvector. Okay, so now we will ask the same question, the kind of question similar to this uh, setting of uh, can and uh, lineal and Kali. So I will state, uh, ah, okay, so one more comment. Why is it, uh, so I mentioned that for making this comment. Why is it a good candidate for being a phenomen uh, noise sensitive? Okay, so let's look at the function f of this array of vector x, which is a lambda of x. Okay, so the top eigenvalue. Okay, so the variance of lambda for example, if you are in a, for the GUE or GOE, is of order n power minus 1 over 3. Okay? But the gradient of this function, lambda, as a function of the entries, but this is simply the sum over ij of the, of the square of the coordinate of the top eigenvector, so this is 1. Okay, so we are exactly in this setting. The variance of the function is much smaller than the, but its gradient. So there should be some noise sensitivity here. So this is the okay. case. So here is the theorem. Uh, uh, so the first is that if you resample more than n power uh, five over three entries. Then the scalar product between V and VK uh, goes to zero. And uh, conversely, uh, the expectation of the max over K between uh, one or zero and epsilon n power five over three of uh, the norm between V and VK goes to zero uh, when you choose uh, the proper phase. Uh, for example, you assume that the, your eigenvectors have a positive first coordinate or something like that. Okay. And what is epsilon? Epsilon is uh, unfortunately not any function. It's like, uh, it's like log n minus C times log log n. 
it's not exactly as sharp as that, but uh, okay. So we have a uh, here you are. Assume as so you will see uh, you will essentially forget uh, about your past after more than n over five or three steps, which is much less than n square. So it's not not noise sensitive. Okay. So if you are a physicist, uh, this is uh, no obvious. So that's why I will tell you. Uh, so why n power 5 over 3? So it's not hard to guess. Uh, let's make a picture. So here I'm representing the eigenvalues of, um, here I'm representing the eigenvalues of x. So I have the largest one, which I call lambda. OK. So let's call it lambda 1, subscript 1. There is another, the second largest one, which is lambda 2. OK. And the difference, the distance between them will typically be of order n power minus over 1 over 6. So again, for example, for the GOE, and it's known in greater generality, thanks to the work of uh, Erdos, Yao, and co-authors. OK. So I know that in this spacing, so this is roughly of order uh, 2 square root n up to some fluctuation, but the distance, OK. So now, lambda 1, I do one resampling. OK, I just take one entry, resample it, and look at what is, how much do I have moved uh, my top eigenvalue. So this should be the distance, the dist it should be roughly, at least uh, in, at infinitesimal order, if, if, when you, if your first set, you have resampled just the entry ij, it will be essentially, maybe there is a factor 2, but uh, something like that, xij prime minus xij times vj. Maybe there is a 2, but okay, we don't care. OK? Well, v is the top eigenvalue of uh, x. OK, so we know from... Uh, uh, Erdos and Yao and Schlein uh, paper, but the L-infinity norm of V is of order uh, uh, log n power C over square root n, which is, let's say, uh, n minus 1 plus little over 1. Okay? So if, we, you, if you call uh, Zij uh, this random variable, which is a center random variable, and, you, and if you forgot about the dependency but, but that Vi is a random and depends on uh, Zij, you could write roughly that as Zij divided by n power 1 plus little of 1. Okay? Let's forget about the fact that there is dependence here. So lambda k... If it were independent, after k step of that, so it would be the sum of our uh, i uh, t plus 1 minus lambda t for t going to uh, 0 to k minus 1. Okay? If, if everything is roughly independent, it would be of the roughly of order square root of k divided by n times 1 plus little of 1. Okay? You follow me? So I just say that roughly the top eigenvalue should make a random walk with steps of size 1 over n. OK, so after k steps, will be like roughly at of, of a distance square root k divided by n. But of the second eigenvalue is doing the same, by the same argument. But this, the fact that lambda 1 minus lambda is roughly equal to that will be very wrong when lambda 1 and lambda 2 will be close together. OK? So this uh, heuristic should break down when that is of order, uh, when this is proportional to the distance between the two eigenvalues, this heuristic should completely break down because then uh, you should start to feel uh, the lambda 2 and the rest of the spectrum. So if you write that square root k over n is equal to n power minus 1 over 6, you would get n k, something which is going on at, n, at k of order 5 over 3. OK? Was it clear? So there is no mystery here. OK, so the proof, uh, there are two statements. Uh, OK, so this one is, uh, is essentially trying to make a rigorous, uh, 
is, is trying to make a rigorous uh, a derivation of that argument. Okay? But this one uh, is uh, more original, and so I will try to, in the rest of the talk, I will try to explain you how you get that. Okay. Okay, so we will, we will obtain that from very general uh, relations, uh, which will help, which will, we will use to, to so we will know, we will use the fact that we know that the variance of lambda is of order one over uh, n power minus one over three to deduce that it must be noise sensitive, okay? So it will be done using some connection between a variance and uh, noise sensitivity. So it's very general. It has nothing to do with uh, random matrices. Noise sensitivity. OK, so it starts with a lemma uh, by uh, Chatterjee. So I, I, I know it from Chatterjee, but maybe it's earlier than that. I don't know. So you take uh, x in this space, and you take x, which is a vector of independent random variable, independent random variables. OK? I take x prime, an independent copy. OK? I, take, I define x uh, k without parentheses as being the same as x, but I have replaced the case entry by uh, x prime. And all the others are unchanged. OK, and x uh, k with parentheses is the first k coordinates are coordinates of the first copy of my random variable. And the other one, the remaining one, they are copies of the, uh, the, the of x. Okay? So x0 is x, xk, xn, sorry, is x prime. So I interpolate, so the sequence of variables of random xk interpolates by just uh, by, by, by adding coordinates from x to x prime. Okay, so the lemma of Chatterjee with this notation is that you can write exactly the variance of, of any function uh, in R, let's say, by writing, okay, let's forget about it, that the variance of f of x is exactly equal, so it's an equality, to the sum from k run to n of the expectation of f of x when I have shifted the case coordinate times f of k minus 1 minus f of x k. So it's an identity, so it's not very difficult to prove. It's essentially easy to prove. Uh, but uh, it's a very nice first, okay? So what you see here, here you have just flipped. These two vectors, they differ from one coordinate. And these two vectors, they also differ from the one coordinate, okay? The case coordinate. And uh, so this uniformity inequality, for example, of course, if you can write expect you can write also the covariance of f and g. If here you put f, if you put g, it's also true. So for example, from that, you can deduce in one line uh, the f Einstein inequality and the Harris inequality. OK, but that's not what I want to do. Now, I want to, you also remark that in res resampling, it's independent. So here, I've decided to, to go from x to x prime by, by looking, by just changing the first coordinates and the second and so on. But I could, I could of course, uh, resample, uh, take a permutation, a fix a permutation on Sn, and just first resample sig the sigma 1 coordinates and the sigma 2 and so on. 
So it will be, of course, the same inequality, so I denote it by sigma. Okay. So which means that I have re xk I, is different from x by just the sigma scale coordinate, and here I've resampled the sigma 1 up to sigma k minus 1. Uh, okay. So this is for any sigma in SN. Okay. The reason for that is that intuitively, uh, one more comment, so intuitively, uh, the more you go in this sum, and the less and less these two, these two guys are correlated. Okay? Because Xn is X prime. And, and X, uh, the first terms are very, the, the two vectors they are very correlated, but the last ones have only very few coordinates in common. Okay, so we have a lemma which formalizes that. So you call uh, uh, bk to be this number. Okay, and we have our lemma, which will be the basis of the method, which says that if sigma is uniform, so you take a uniform random permutation on Sn. Or if your function is uh, is uh, symmetric, if sigma is uniform on Sn, then the sequence bk they are uh, bk plus one is less than bk. Uh, less, which formalizes this idea that this, this this is more and more decorrelated as k goes to infinity, as k goes to n. So a corollary, which will be the corollary, uh, a corollary that you can bound, that the expectation, a corollary, is that the expectation of f of x minus f of x k, uh, k times f of x k minus 1 minus f of x k, this is less than the variance of f divided by k. And there is a 2. OK. Because it's decreasing, so. OK. So now we can come back to our problem with xk, lambda k, and so on. So I will try to tell you uh, about uh, that. Uh, OK, so, so small n is uh, n n plus 1 over 2. My function f of x is just my uh, lambda, which is the largest eigenvalue. OK, so if you play with that, uh, let's call, uh, let's take s t uh, be a uniform, s largest uh, on uh, 1, s t uh, n. So I take a uniform random pair st. I, I call y, which is the same as x. So x is my uh, Wigner matrix. xk is the one where I've resampled the k variables. x, same as x, but uh, I just replaced uh, x, uh, the, the, the t, st variable and, and uh, the ts is equal to, let's say, a third copy of my variables. OK, so I resum x and y are, are equal, but they are except for one entry where I've resampled. And I do the same with yk. Same as xk, but OK. Uh, okay. So if you play with this corollary, and uh, I cheat a little bit because here it's uniform. But okay. What you will find is that you call a mu u top eigenvector, uh, to, top eigenvalue, top eigenvector, uh, mu k 
UK, uh, maybe let's, okay. UK, mu k, the pair top eigenvalue, top eigenvector of y k. And what you will find, so I remember lambda and v are these pairs for x k, and x is uh, lambda and v. What you will find is that the variance of lambda, which will be of order n power minus 1 over uh, 3, okay, times a constant, will be divided by k, will be less than uh, the expectation of lambda minus uh, uh, mu times uh, lambda k minus mu k. Okay. So it's essentially the same, this color. Okay, so now that we are interested by the statement on the, on the eigenvector, uh, so uh, now I write that uh, lambda is u uh, is v scalar x v, and that mu is u scalar y u. Okay, so lambda minus mu, it's less. So this is this difference. It's less since it's a top eigenvector than v times x minus. Uh, y times v, okay? And it's at least the same with u, which is equal to v s uh, some variable, which is the difference between uh, when I have resampled, z s t times v t. So it, maybe it's twice x s t minus x second s t or something like that. Okay, you can do the same with you and uh, okay, and now you use the fact that uh, v and u are very close in L infinity norm, uh, which is not uh, an obvious statement, but uh, nevertheless uh, true that. The L infinity norm between V and U, so V are eigenvector of uh, top eigen are the same uh, top eigenvector of two matrices, two Wigner matrices, which differ just by a single coordinate. So this will be bounded in L infinity norm by n power minus one half minus alpha for some alpha which I will not write, which is strictly positive. Okay, so this follows from. Uh, uh, some work based on the lo optimal local laws op obtained by uh, Erdosh and Yao and their co-authors. Okay, so in this expression, when I look at the difference between lambda and mu, I can just replace, so I have also uh, that uh, uh, this is larger than u s z s t u t for the same reason. So I can replace uh, u, I can replace u and v because they are very close in an infinity norm. And I will get, uh, I do the same for lambda k and mu k. What I will get on the right hand side, so maybe I can write it here, that this will be larger than uh, the expectation of this variable uh, uh, of, okay, times, okay, uh, no, okay, it will be, okay, no, it's not, it's too, cheat, I cheat too much here. Okay, uh, two copies of this, the same with x prime and uh, times v s v t v k s v k t and the error I make uh, will be of order uh, n power uh, there are four terms so it's n power 2 plus alpha okay so I'm almost done. So let's. So there are some dependencies still between these vectors and this vector, but let's forget about that, and assume that I can replace that by the, ex, this, the expectation of that, which is two or one, or I forgot. So let's say that this is roughly equal to this. This is roughly equal to the expectation of v s times v t v s k times. 
times VTK. Okay, so you can make this formal by uh, using this uh, kind of L infinity, this kind of L infinity perturbation inequalities. So this is roughly equal to that. And now since the pair ST is uniformly sampled, this, is, will, this will be exactly equal to 1 over n, uh, uh, something like, it will be uh, like 1 over n, n minus n plus 1 times, times the sum over all ij of vi, vj, vik, vjk. This exactly that because ST is sampled uniformly at random. Okay, and this is exactly uh, okay. So let's, let's say this is one over n squared times the expectation uh, times. Uh, so there is still an expectation because it's a randomness about everything. So the, the expectation of v times v k squared plus little big O of 1 over n plus 2 plus alpha. Okay, so we are, we are very happy because now we multiply by n squared, so there is still a vanishing term here, and uh, we have on the right-hand side this term, which will go to zero as soon as k is much larger than n power of 5 over 3. Okay, so that's essentially the proof. Of course, there are many details, and... Um, which I uh, intentionally uh, forget. Uh, so one of the main arguments uh, is to prove that, so which is strange because by, say, by our proof of saying that it is noise sensitive, so meaning that by changing very few coordinates, you get a completely different orthogonal, uh, you get a, an eigenvector which is uh, uh, very far from the original eigenvector, relies on the fact that when you change one coordinate, it's very stable. That's very unintuitive. It still uh, puzzles me, but uh, okay. okay. Because these two eigenvectors are correspond to the same, eigen the same Wigner matrix where I've just replaced one entry. Okay, so I can prove that in L infinity norm it doesn't change much, but we use that to prove that in fact the top eigenvector is very sensitive. So it's uh, kind of uh, strange. Uh, of course, uh, uh, so this can probably be generalized to the case largest eigenvalue, uh, maybe the j's largest, largest eigenvalue. Uh, we, did not, we didn't uh, try to write the proof, but probably with some minor. Uh, and then the, the threshold will be at k, which will be like n power 5 over 3 times the minimum between j and uh, n plus 1 minus j power minus 2 or 3. Uh, so it's a question, but it's possible that the, 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 this is what gives the, the heuristic I gave you at the beginning. And uh, we were, up, we were, I was mainly interested by this, uh, trying to illustrate the phenomenon. So I think it should work also the proof for this, this case. And um, Maybe what is not uh, proved, uh, what is uh, f uh, not clear, but the strategy should be also uh, a similar kind of strategy might work, is to do, uh, for example, first passage percolation between 1, 1 to n, n, where you put ID weights, uh, for example, uh, exponential or um, uh, geometric weights but on the edges, look at the pass which minimize the number of the total lengths, and do the, this uh, resampling dynamics. Uh, maybe by using this corollary, it could be possible to prove uh, noise sensitivity for, the, for this. When you, the analog would, of the scalar product would be to take the, the amming distance between uh, the paths, between two optimizing paths, where uh, when you have changed uh, k or k's, when you have resampled uh, the values of k edges. But uh, this is, uh, the strategy is clear. It may work to use this corollary. But then the technical uh, estimate that you would need on first passage percolation, uh, I'm not sure that uh, they are available in the literature or, or not. 
Okay, I think uh, that's all I had to say, so thank you for your attention. Okay, any...